Welcome to today's IEEE Explore webinar on search strategies to optimize your research time. My name is Jalen Kelly and I am an IEEE Client Services Manager based in San Antonio, Texas. My colleague, Craig Griffith, who's in Northern California, is also on the call today and he's going to moderate our Q&A session after the live demo. But before we get started, a few housekeeping items. All of the widgets on your screen are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to make the most out of your space. At the bottom of your screen are engagement tools, so you can find answers to common technical issues in the orange question mark help tool. Um, all lines are muted, so if you have a question, you can submit them through the Q&A widget on your screen or click the purple Q&A icon at the bottom of the screen. And at the end of today's session, you can click the yellow certificate icon at the bottom of your screen to download a certificate of participation. You should also see a resources widget on your screen where you can download a copy of today's slides, as well as um, access some of the URLs that we're going to be referring to throughout today's session. But before we get started, I want to take a quick poll question. So if you could let me know what is your role? Are you an undergraduate student, graduate student, librarian or information professional, faculty member, an engineer or researcher, or something else? And Craig and I are actually librarians and information professionals. While you're answering the question, I'll just give you a brief outline of today's presentation. I'm going to start with a few slides to introduce you to the IEEE and the content available on the IEEE Explore Digital Library. Then we're going to go live into IEEE Explore where I'll share some best practices and then we'll save about 10 minutes at the end for a Q&A session. All right, so let's see what we've got here. So the largest bulk is librarian and information professionals, but we also have um, almost 7% undergraduate students, 15% grad students, 16% faculty, so and 32% engineering researchers. So a pretty good mix of people on the line today. And regardless of your familiarity with IEEE Explore, today's session should be helpful for both new and experienced users. All right, so if you're not familiar with the IEEE, we are the world's largest technical membership association with more than 420,000 members around the world. In addition to being a membership association, IEEE, though, is also a publisher. And the content that we published is discoverable in the IEEE Explore Digital Library, which today is over 5 million full text documents. As a nonprofit association, IEEE's mission is to foster technical innovation for the benefit of humanity. And IEEE has identified articles in Explore that may help researchers who are directly or indirectly engaged in the fight against COVID-19. And we've made that collection of research freely available on IEEE Explore for the duration of the global health crisis. And speaking of the global health crisis, um, I'm curious to see if people are still working from home or studying from home, or if you're working or studying from the office now, or if you're doing some sort of a mixed hybrid approach where you're spending some time in the classroom and some time online classes, things like that. So if you could go ahead and give us um, an update. I'm personally working from home, but some of my colleagues are working from the office and others are doing a hybrid approach. So it's a mixed bag for a lot of us. Okay, let's see here. What's It looks like most people are still home or doing a hybrid with a mix. Only about 10%, 11% are working from the office or studying from at school 100%. Okay, well, one of the reasons we ask is because with the shift to remote learning and working from home, IEEE uh, 
had to ensure that every user could access IEEE Explore in this past year. And we have a variety of resources to help you with this, including a remote access blog with tips, links to our help and resources pages on remote access, and a link to a remote access help form. So if you're having issues accessing IEEE Explore, please do check out these um, tools and information to help you. And IEEE has a variety of live and on-demand webinars, such as this one we're doing now. But the IEEE's educational activity team also provided a series of free webinars to help educators support distance learning. And again, this URL should be in the resources link. And of course, we're always introducing new content to address growing areas of research. And within the IEEE Explore Digital Library, you'll see five different types of content. So we have approximately 200 journals and magazines with peer-reviewed articles on a wide range of established and uncharted technologies. You'll see conference papers on the latest technology breakthroughs, standards that underpin many of today's top technologies, such as the 802.11 Wi-Fi standard. We also have out hundreds of hours of e-learning courses taught by experts in the field. And there's eight e-book collections from a variety of publishers. So your access to this content depends upon your organization's institutional subscription to the IEEE Explore Digital Library. And while most people think of the IEEE, they think of electrical engineering and computing which are our core foundational technologies, IEEE actually has 39 societies which cover a wide range of technical interests. And because technology impacts pretty much everything today, you'll find technical cross-disciplinary research in the IEEE Explore Digital Library as well. IEEE content is also very highly valued and highly cited. So one impact, one a metric we look at is the journal citation report from Clarivate Analytics, which looks at how often journal articles are cited by other journals. And IEEE publishes many of the top cited journals in our core areas, including electrical engineering, telecommunications, computer science, and so on. And because the technology landscape is evolving, we're always introducing new publications. So here you can see five new journals on topics such as industrial electronics, information theory, and artificial intelligence. The conference collection in IEEE Explore continues to grow as well. Um, due to the pandemic, some IEEE conferences in 2020 postponed to a later date, but the majority of IEEE conferences continued on in a new virtual format, and many saw record attendance levels. IEEE is also expanding our open access offerings. Uh, the goal is to provide any author a publication venue regardless of their funding standing status, the publishing mandates you may have to work with, or where you are in the world. So before we go into the live demo, which is next, let's take a quick poll to see how familiar everyone is with IEEE Explore. So if you could just let me know how often you use IEEE Explore. And during today's live session, I'm going to be covering best practices for searching and browsing IEEE Explore, uh, using personalization features, which will help you stay up to date on the latest technology breakthroughs, finding trending content, accessing supplemental items such as code, data sets, and video, and other value-added features that you might not be aware of. All right, so let's see the results. We've got a pretty good equal mix across. Um, we have some people who've never used it, some people who use it daily. So again, this should today's session should be of interest to all of you because it will allow you to um, get some information whether you're new 
or experienced with IEEE. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now so we can start the live demo portion. All right. So if your organization has an institutional subscription to IEEE Explore, you should see an access provided by and your institution name here at the top of the page. I'm going to go ahead and blow this up just a little. And if you want to see what's included in your subscription, you can go to the My Settings drop-down menu and click on What Can I Access? It will give you a description of your institution subscription package and link you out to the titles that are included in that subscription. But in addition to being authenticated institutionally, you can also create a personal account on Explore to personalize your experience. So the personal account will let you set up your own personal search preferences, uh, create alerts to stay up to date, turn on a search history to record your recent searches, and a variety of other things as well. The personal account, though, does not give you access to your institutional subscription, so you'll need to be sure to um, log in or come in however you're supposed to for your institutional subscription. But then you can create a personal account by clicking Create Account. It's a really short form that allows you to uh, give us a name, email address, and password. And then each time you come in to explore, after you've been authenticated with your institutional subscription, you can log in with that personal account. All of the personalization features are accessible from that My Settings drop-down menu. And the first time you log in, you'll probably want to review the preferences. So you can click on the preferences here and designate how you want your search results sorted and displayed, what particular uh, publisher's content you want to search. Do you want to turn on that search history recording because it's turned off by default? Do you want to set up a citation download to go specifically to BibTeX? Things like that. Once you made the changes, just simply click Update, and you'll be able to uh, see those changes for each time you're logged in with your personal account. Back on the IEEE Explore homepage, which you can always get to by clicking on the logo in the upper left-hand corner, you also have the ability to discover the top 25 trending search terms and most downloaded content or most popular content. So if you click on this top searches and then go see all, and list view, you will be able to see the top 25 search terms that are trending right now in IEEE Explore. Uh, below that is the most downloaded content from the previous month. And this can really help you understand what technologies are important to engineers and researchers around the world and gauge interest in different topics. If you click on any of these, such as artificial intelligence, it'll run a search and explore for the terms artificial intelligence. And one of the nice things about Explore, and if you've logged in with that personal account, is that you can set up save search alerts. So that's how you set up an alert on a topic of interest. So you just simply run the search, click set search alert, give it a quick name, and hit save. And then you'll get a note that your search has been saved and you will be notified when new content is published on your topic. And staying current with the latest relevant research and technology developments is of advantage, and I would encourage people to take advantage of this particular feature. 
Once you get into the search results page, though, you'll notice there's some recommended publications. You can also narrow your search results by a variety of options, including content type. So let's say we were just interested in journal articles on artificial intelligence. We could narrow down our search results that way. And then along the left-hand side of the search results page are the areas that help you um, narrow down even further using what we call facets. So the first option here is if you just want to see what you can access, you can click the subscribed content filter and it'll just give you what you have full text access to. You can narrow down by publication year, so you have control over the time frame within which you're searching. You can also narrow down by things like author, author affiliation, and publication title. But these facets are research oriented, so you can also use them to get insights into your content, into those results. So for example, if you click on the author facet, you can narrow down by specific author, but you can also browse the top 25 authors based on record count. And that'll give you ideas as to who some of the subject matter experts are and key researchers within this particular area. We even sometimes hear that recruiters look at this to see who's publishing a lot on a particular topic. You can also take a look at the affiliation facet if you're trying to understand what organizations are publishing a lot on this topic, or you can look at the publication title facet to see which journals have published a lot. And that might give you um, some insights into where you might want to publish a paper on that topic. You can also narrow down your search results to those that have supplemental items associated with them. So we have media, and this is anything that the author really chose to submit that further explains or illustrates the points of the paper. If they chose to include it, we will also include it in Explore. Uh, data sets, these are data sets that any author has loaded on the IEEE data port, which is our data repository. And then code, which is any uh, code that authors chose to make open source by uploading them into CodeOcean, which is a cloud-based algorithm platform. And one of the most helpful topics, I think, particularly for students or even a practicing engineer who's exploring a new technology to them, is this publication topics facet. So IEEE content is indexed with keywords that are supposed to describe the content of the paper. And so when you come in here, you can actually see the top 25 keywords. So this might give you ideas for how to narrow down your research. Uh, as a student, it might give you ideas for, you know, you're interested in artificial intelligence, but you're not sure exactly where you want to go with that for your project. This might also help. And um, it can also help just sort of understanding what are the relevant topics and technologies to the broader, in this case, artificial intelligence topic. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and narrow down to feature extraction. So it's going to take me down to 7,500 documents, which is still quite a few. Um, I can go ahead and start taking a look. But if not, um, I could also use my search within results to even narrow down further. So now I can add my own keyword to search by. So I'm going to add audio and it's going to narrow down my search results even more. And one of the nice things about using the global search bar or any of our searches, but starting really broadly, is you have this ability to use all these refinements and search within to filter your results so you can drill down on a topic, but then you can drill back out by removing any of those refinements and then going a different route. So without having to start your search all the way over again, you can kind of maneuver through the search results set like. Also on the search results set, you can change how your search results are store sorted and displayed. So the default is relevancy ranking. So it's going to pull the most relevant content to the top of the page 
based on your search terms. But sometimes you might want to browse the most recently published content on a topic. You can do that using newest first. If you're looking for influential papers, um, you can sort most cited by papers to see which journal articles, conference papers, and explore have been cited most frequently in other journal articles and conference papers. So this can give you good insights into finding, you know, an important influential paper on a topic. Uh, we also have the ability to change how your search results are sorted by most cited by patents. So if you want to see which documents in your search results set have been cited most frequently in patent filings at the Worldwide Intellectual Property Office, the European Patent Office, and the U.S. Patent Office, you can sort most cited by patents. And this can give you a good indication to how the research is being used out in industry because patents are sort of the best indication of companies' R&D efforts. And then the newest option is most popular. So if you want to see what documents in your search result set are being read most frequently by other researchers and engineers around the world, you can simply sort most popular Probably not a big surprise that a COVID-19 related article is the most popular right now. Uh, but as you're looking through your search results, if there's paper citations, you'll see them. If there's patent citations, anything that you have full text access to will have an unlocked green lock next to it. And if there's any supplemental materials like that code data sets that I mentioned earlier, you'll see an icon for it. Now, of course, you can always download the full text PDF, but if you click on the document title, it takes you to the expanded abstract and full text HTML view. And there's a lot of really nice value added features on this page, things you can't do in the PDF and helpful to be able to grab content to reuse. So as we scroll down, you'll be able to see the full abstract. You can also see the complete outline for this paper. And if you want, you can jump to a particular section within the paper. You also have the ability to search within to see your keywords in context. And as you scroll through, if you see any equations, you'll be able to look at those equations in either tech command or math ML code. So here we see an equation. I put my cursor over it. Oh, it's still loading, sorry. Put my cursor over it, do a right mouse click. And then I get a menu where I can show the math in whichever format I prefer. It'll open it up in a new widget, and then you can simply highlight it and copy and paste it into a program with an equation editor. Below the outline of the paper are some different sections where we've pulled out the author information, for example. So you can see a little bit of information about the authors. Um, if there's one you're interested in, you can open their author details page. That will give you, in some cases, their photo and bio, depending on what information they've made available. But it'll also give you an idea of who, what are their top publication topics, um, who are some of the people that they co-author with most frequently, as well as browse all of the papers that we've identified as being published by this particular author. And if you're logged in with your personal account, you can even follow this author to set up an author alert and be notified whenever this author publishes anything new in your, you know, that you'd be interested in because you're interested in his publication topics. Below the authors are all of the figures. So the figures appear throughout the paper in the full text HTML view. But if you just wanted to easily scroll through all the figures at once, you can come down to this section of the paper and open up these e 
these figures and then just scroll through all of them. And if you want to save an image, you can put your cursor over it, do a right mouse click and hit save or copy. Below the figures are the references. And one of the things that is really important is to really go beyond the full text PDF by using this page to suggest further avenues of research and help you find other related content. And one way to do that is to review the citations and the references. So the references section is the works cited or bibliography for this paper. And the citations are any papers that have since cited this particular document. So we track when content is cited by IEEE publications, if it's cited by any other publications, as well as if it's cited in any patents. And so that can sometimes lead you to other relevant papers. Also the keyword section, remember I mentioned this earlier, this is how the publication topics facet is um, populated. These are the terms that are supposed to best describe the content of this paper. And if you review these, this might give you additional search terms that you hadn't thought of that you need to try to ensure that you're getting um, all of the content that you want. We also keep track of metrics, so things like how often a paper has been downloaded, how um, many times it's been cited by other databases, and if there's even any online sharing activity, like if it's been tweeted about or used in a news article, you'll see that here in the online sharing activity. This is called Altmetrics. And you can actually click and see which news article, which tweets, the Facebook posts, and so on. And then, as I mentioned, if there's any media, code, or data sets, you'll also see that down here towards the bottom of the paper. In this particular case, this article has code associated with it. And so the author chose to make this code open source. They uploaded it to Code Ocean. And now we can come in here and access the files. Uh, we can run the code directly from here. We can access the code itself. And we can even edit the capsule to test changes to the code. So there's this edit capsule option. So it's almost like a sandbox for code where you can sort of test things out. If we go back up to the top of the page, You'll also see a more like this feature, so it's going to give you some suggested documents. So if this document was useful to you, it's probably worth checking out the relevant content here. You can also set up a citation alert, again, if you're logged in with your personal account, to be notified if anyone else cites this paper in the future. You can request permission for reuse, and you can even share this, the link of this article via email or on social media tools. Obviously, you can download the full text PDF right from here, but if you want to cite this paper in your own paper or report, you can grab the citation or citation and abstract in plain text or in a format for a bibliographic management system. So those are some of the features of the search results page and the full text HTML article. You'll notice though at the top of this page is this prominent search box. This is our global search box and it's the same search box that you see on the IEEE Explore homepage. You'll notice that the default is to search across all of the content but there is a drop down menu that allows you to search within a particular content type that allows you to do an author search or even a publication title search. But when you're searching in this global search bar, you're doing what's called a metadata search. It's looking for your search terms in the document title, publication title, 
abstract, index terms, author name, and date. It is not looking for your search terms in the full body of the paper. You can do that, and I'll show you how in a few minutes to do a full text search. But I just wanted to make sure people were aware when you're searching here, by default, it's metadata only. Just below the global search bar is a link to the advanced search. And there are three tabs on the advanced search page. Uh, the first is the advanced search itself, then the command search, and a citation search. The citation search is what I call a known item search. So when you're looking for a very specific document, you can just fill in the fields that you happen to know, and it will go out and look for that document for you. We also have a command search, which allows you to search using command language searching, and then the advanced search, which is a guided way to do a little bit more complex searching. So you'll notice it defaults to three search boxes, but you can add until you have a total of 10 here on the page. It also defaults to do a metadata search, but there is a drop down menu so you can search within the full text and metadata, full text only. And so searching in the full text and metadata or full text only should broaden your search and get you more results. If you're trying to narrow your search, you might want to search within a specific field, such as the abstract or index terms. But you can also search by things like author affiliation. So if you have an organization that you know that's doing a lot of cutting edge research, you can do a search on them and see what they've been publishing on. A lot of people in industry like to use this to search for their competitors. Um, if you're a student and you're getting ready to go out into the workforce, you might want to use this to do searches on companies you're interviewing with. It can just help you get an idea of who some of their key researchers are and the top publication topics that they're publishing on. And you'll see that there's a variety of other options, including things things like standard number. And you can combine your search terms with and or, or not using this drop down menu. So the most effective way to search is to take a minute to stop and think about all of the similar terms or synonyms that you want to search by. So I want to look at um, surgical robots, um, I'm really interested in, you know, non-invasive surgeries. So I know that sometimes people say non-invasive, but I also know sometimes people say minimally invasive. So I want to combine those two search terms using the OR operator so that I will ensure that I get either minimally invasive or non-invasive. So I want to type those into one search box on the advanced search page. Couple of things to note here. If you wanna get an exact phrase within Explore, you put it within quotes. Um, otherwise, if you enter just two search terms, it's going to automatically and them together and look for both of those terms. If you're going to type in your synonyms, you wanna type in the OR operator in between them, OR needs to be in all caps. And then the database automatically finds pluralized nouns, verb tenses, and British and American spelling variations for you. But that still doesn't find all variations of a word. So for example, robot would find robots plural, but not necessarily robotics. That's not a pluralized noun or verb tense. So in Explore, we have an asterisk wildcard it can be used for any or no characters. You can use it at the end of the word, as I've done here, at the beginning of a word, or in the middle of a word. So it can be used in pretty much any way. But basically, in this case, it's telling the database to begin to find any word that begins with what I placed in front of the asterisk. So any word that begins with robot. So that'll pick up robotics as well as robot singular. Uh, we can do the same thing with surgery to pick up surgical. We can put the asterisk after the G here. 
And you can use up to seven asterisk wildcards per search. We also have a question mark wildcard that stands for a single character. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the search button, but I want to point out that it's going to nest my first box. So basically what this means is nesting is placing your search terms and operators within parentheses to designate the order in which they're processed. So when you're using the advanced search page, just remember that each individual search box is going to be nested separately. So you can see here how it nested my first search box and then how it nested the second one, place the prints around it, and then the third search box. Now you don't have to do this type of searching on the advanced search page. If you're the kind of person who's familiar and comfortable with doing this type of searching, you can do it from the global search bar or from the command search page. The key is you are in complete control of the nesting, so you need to put the friends around your search terms and operators in the proper context. And you need to type in your connectors or Boolean operators and or not in all caps. But because we did a metadata search on the advanced search page and the default here is a metadata search, we're gonna get the exact same search results, those 2,224 documents. So the goal in Explore is we do provide a lot of different search options because we want you to be able to search however you feel most comfortable searching, or you might search different ways depending on your particular use case. Like I said, sometimes you might be exploring a topic and want to start broad. Other times you might have a fairly good defined research area where you've thought through your synonyms and tangential technologies and all of that. Now, you can do the same type of searching as I mentioned on the command search page, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, but just wanted to quickly point out two features here on the search results page. One is the ability to select up to 10 PDFs to download them into a zip file. So this is a bulk or multi PDF download tool as well as the ability to expand the number of results per page up to 100. And then you can export up to 100 citations into a format for a bibliographic management system. So you can download citations one page at a time. And then if we go to the command search page, I'll just point out that some people might prefer doing that command language searching, that same search we just did on the global search bar in the command search because the command search page has drop down menus. So if you wanted to search within the full text and metadata, it will populate that field appropriately for you. So you don't actually have to know the syntax, syntax for the individual fields. Drop down menus for the operators, so it'll type those in in all caps for you as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to browsing, and then once we get done with that, we can start the Q&A session. There is a prominent browse drop-down menu on every page in Explore. It's organized by type of content. So I mentioned earlier we have eight ebooks packages in Explore. So you can come in and browse across all of the titles by either entering a unique word or phrase from the title of the book or browsing alphabetically. You also have the ability to browse by topic. So we have 16 subject areas where we've mapped our content to. So you'll see the same option in the browse journals, browse or you can browse by publisher and you can see the list of all the publishers that we have in Explore and then click on one of those to see a little bit more information about the collection as well as the ability to browse by a topic within that collection. So let's say we're most interested in geoscience related ebooks from IEEE Wiley Press.
And then some of our publications, uh, ebooks are available at the individual chapter level as well as the full ebook download. So depending on which collection you're in, you may be able to download the entire ebook as well as download just individual chapters that you're interested in. And again, your access to any of this content that I'm showing depends upon what your institution subscribes to and gives you access to. Conferences, um, as I mentioned earlier, you will have the ability to browse by those same 16 subject areas. The by title tab is nice because you can browse by acronym. Uh, there are a lot of conferences out there at are pretty much just known by their acronyms. Uh, a lot of people don't even know what the acronym stands for, and that's okay. You can come in, search by that acronym, browse the complete list of years available in Explore, and then click on the year you're interested in to go to the table of contents. From there, you can browse again, or you will have the ability to search within, so you can find specific papers on specific topics. IEEE also has hundreds of hours of e-learning courses that are taught by experts in the field. Most are about an hour in length, but we do have some that are of different lengths. As you come to the top of the page, you'll see our course programs. So this is a series of courses on a topic that's usually something emerging or cutting edge. So for example, if we wanted to see artificial intelligence and ethics and design, we could quickly, quickly click on that and see the list of courses in this particular course program. You can also though browse by Topic. As you scroll down, you'll see different categories here. And if you click into one, such as computing, you can then access the subtopics within computing to browse within a particular area. So maybe you're interested in ethical hacking, for example. You can then go right to the ethical hacking related courses. Browsing journals works very similar to the conferences. You're going to see the browse by title and by topic tabs. Um, when you're browsing in the journals by title, you can just enter a unique word or phrase from the title. And it'll look for any journals or magazines with that word in the title or even the title history. And then from there, you can click on the journal you're interested in to go to the journal homepage. On the journal homepage, you can do a search within across all years of this, just this publication by using the global search bar and clicking search within publication. You can browse the most popular articles or the early access articles, which are the preprint or forthcoming articles that have completed the peer review process and are awaiting publication in Explore. Or you can go right to the current issues table of contents. And for most IEEE journals, and depending on your subscription package, you should be able to download the entire issue in one PDF. So that's useful for offline viewing. If you're logged in with your personal account here, you can click add title to my alerts to set up a table of content alerts on this particular journal. And the way this will work is know that um, when the journal is published and posted on Explore, you're going to get an email with a table of contents in the body of the email. Our newest personalization feature is add to my favorites. So you can basically bookmark your favorite journals and when you go to the IEEE Explore homepage, when you're again logged in with your personal account, as you scroll down on the homepage, you're going to see that we have things like featured authors, uh, featured articles, news, 
but there's also going to be a section for your favorite journals and magazines. So you can always Jaylen? quickly and easily come in and access. Yes. Jalen, sorry. Um, just want to give you a little time check. It is nine. It is um, 15 minutes before the hour. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. So you have them bookmarked here and you can, you know, jump right to the current issues table of contents right from here. Lastly, browsing standards. When you come into the browse standards, you'll notice it looks different than the journals, conferences, and that's because it's a unique type of content. So you're going to default into a by collection tab where you can browse the top level collections within Explore. So things like digital health and vehicular technology, but you can also click on some of these broader topics and see the sub. So that's a nice way to be able to browse topically. So maybe you're just interested in the protective relaying standards. It'll just pull those up for you easily. But if you're looking for a very specific IEEE standard and you know the number, the most efficient way to get to that is to come to the Browse Standards by Number page, go to the range that you're looking for, or just type in the number here. And Explore will very efficiently give you that particular standard organized by version and status. So you can quickly and easily identify the current active approved version. Um, if you're looking for historical superseded versions, things like that. So it makes it very clear and concise what you're looking at. And if you do want to browse the help files or search the help files, we do have a resources and help section here where you can access additional information about that. Okay, um, but we're gonna move on into our q and I think now, so sorry. It's really slow to load. <laughs> um, while that's loading, <laughs> we'll go ahead and move on to the Q&A. Uh, Craig? Sure. Thanks, Jalen. Um, so everyone, we have a number of questions that have come in. And so I just want to let you know that we are going to try and get to the ones that have been asked frequently. Um, and if we don't get to yours, we will try and follow up with you individually if we can. Um, so first off, Jalen, uh, uh, we've had a number of questions regarding, you know, writing a paper for um, IEEE. Could you tell us a little bit about that and where to find that information again? Sure. Um, that's a great question. It's a little bit outside the purview today, so we didn't really cover it. But there are a lot of tools available in the IEEE Author Center to help authors in this process. Uh, there's things like a publication recommender, which will help you identify maybe the, the best journals to submit to. There are the style guide and templates, um, some different reference preparation assistance and information on graphics and things like that. So I would highly encourage people to start at IEEE Author Center IEEE.org. There's also some tutorial videos in there as well. And um, I believe this URL should also be in the resources link if you're looking for it. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, second um, area is, and then we're going to get to search related questions, um, but people are wondering about if IEEE membership is the same as a subscription to Explore and was wondering if you could go into that a little bit. Yeah, so there are a lot of benefits to an IEEE membership, and depending on how you customize your membership, so for example, people can join individual IEEE societies, and that individual society may give their members access to a particular journal or maybe a conference. But the difference is an institution 
institutional subscription gives you access to content from all 39 societies. It's uh, going to be much more robust. Uh, there's a variety of different subscription options, so it kind of depends, but some people may have a subscription that includes access to standards, which you wouldn't get as a member and things like that. Uh, but the institutional subscription is just a much broader, bigger subscription option. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to um, address some searching related questions and some is just a little bit going over, you know, things you've already gone over. Um, people may have joined later or something, um, but first one is how can I limit my search to ebooks that cover power systems? Okay, so um, there's two things you can do. One, you can come in and just simply enter power systems into the global search bar. And then when you get to the search results page, limit by content type to see just the books. So you'll see at the top here, there's a variety of options um, by content type and one of those is books. Click apply. And if you wanna further narrow down by a specific um, publisher, you can do that, but you'll see, you know, you'll get 2,900 results. Some of them are going to be full books. Some of them are going to be individual book chapters. And again, you can narrow down by this or by the book series. The second way you can do that is just using the browse books and typing in power systems. Um, that will pull up any titles that have the words power systems in the title, or you can go into by topic and browse the power and energy related books. Wonderful. Okay, if, if, let's go back to our um, power systems example, if we could, please. And. Sure. Um, People are wondering, okay, so let's say, you know, that we've decided we don't want to look at ebooks now. We want to narrow to either conferences and maybe include e courses there. Um, how, how could we do that? Yeah, so let's um, retrace our steps here. So we go into power systems. And we were looking at the books, right? So mm -hmm. once you're in your search, you can also remove those refinements or add things to it. So in this case, we could either remove the books or, and I'm sorry, you said courses and something else. Courses or and or the conferences. Yeah, so you could either just add those two, or if you'd want to remove the books, then you can just simply click the check little Xbox next to the books. And now we're just looking at the conferences and courses with power systems in the metadata. Great, okay, thank you. Um, now, how do you limit your results to those that are included in your subscription? Um, as you scroll down, you're gonna see this show box and this shows um, all the results by default but you can narrow down to just content that you have access to by using the subscribed content filter. You'll notice there is also an open access filter, which will just show you open access related content separately, but that open access content is also included in the subscribed content, even though it's not necessarily subscription content, but it is content that people can access. So that subscribed content filter really means anything that you can access, whether it's part of your institutional subscription or open access content or uh, free content, like you know a table of contents for a conference would be called ephemeral and that information is freely available as well. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and somebody had a question. Now, you've got a search and you're using the search within box. Are you searching the full text then or the metadata or both? Right. So in the search that I did, which was the very first search on artificial intelligence, uh, which was a metadata search, it just searched within the metadata when I did a search within. But that changes depending upon what you're searching. So if you were to search, um, select full text or full text and metadata 
on the advanced search page and run a search and then you search within, it's also going to search within the full text. It's going to retain that difference. So it's either searching the metadata only or the full text and metadata. Okay. And then as off, also I should remind people that within the my settings drop down menu and in the preferences, the default in explore is always to do metadata, but you can change that for yourself to be full text and metadata or full text only, and that will change all search boxes to that default, including search within. Great. So um, someone else wants to know, they have a particular journal that they like to follow. Um, how is it that they set up an alert on that again to be notified when, when the, um, new articles are published? Yeah, so there's two ways to do it. But first and foremost, again, you have to set up a personal account and then log in with that account. So you'll need to see your personal name up here. Um, and as I showed earlier, you can do it from the journal homepage when you're browsing. But you can also go to My Settings, click on Alerts, and here's where you can access all of the different types of alerts that you can set up or that you have set up. So. The first tab is journals and magazines, so you can simply scroll through the list of all the journals and magazines available in Explore. Click the title of the name you're interested in, click update, and that sets up a table of content alert to be notified as, new con uh, as that publication is published over time. So anytime there's a new issue, you'll get an email. But you can also set up conferences alerts. So if you wanted to set up an alert to be notified each week of all the new conferences that were added into Explore, you can. You can also set up alerts on individual standards. So if there's a particular standard that you use heavily in your job and you need to know if a new version is published, an amendment is published, a draft is in the works, you can set up an alert on that individual standard as well. So there's a wide variety of types of um, alerts that you can set up. Great. Uh, okay, another attendee is wondering what the difference is between journals and transactions. Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a, a common question we get. So you'll notice under pe for periodicals, we have um, journals and transactions, which we lump together. Um, we have letters and we have magazines. So magazines are um, more practice oriented content they'll include things like general news and regular columns the journals transactions and letters are how you can publish uh, uh, scientific technical papers in ieee fields of interest and basically today journals and transactions are pretty much interchangeable within ieee um, Historically, there was a difference between them, but not anymore. So some societies call their scholarly peer-reviewed journals journals. Other societies call their scholarly peer-reviewed journals transactions. And then letters are the same for technical papers, but short. So they're usually about four pages in length, where the journal or transaction is probably eight or maybe 10 pages in length. Great. Um, next question, is it, um, this person would like sort of a review of the sort options um, because they're wondering if it's possible to sort by both most cited and newest first. Yeah, so no, there's not. So you, you have to pick one site, uh, one sort option or the other. That's actually a great um, idea though. So we will pass that along to our product development team. But when you come into the search result set, um, you can select one or the other, but not both. So your choices are relevancy ranking, newest first, oldest first, most cited, most popular, and publication title. Great. Now, um, I will point out that publication date, sorry, just one quick thing, is the tiebreaker, though. So if you sorted most cited, and there were two with the same, the newest one will, with the same number of citations, the newest one will appear first. Great. Um, next question. 
are all the documents and information available um, in Explore in English? 99% is. There are a couple of conferences that are regional. Um, I know there's like a Turkish language conference. Um, I believe we have one journal that's in Spanish. Um, so it, there is a few pieces of content that you might run across. Their abstracts will be in English, but the actual papers will be in like Turkish, Chinese, whatever. But again, it's it's a very small portion of the content today. Wonderful. Um, let's see here. Oh, somebody's asking for a um, a definition of metadata and what that is. Yeah, so I'm going to go to the advanced search page real quick and show there is a hover over here. So you can kind of see two things. One, um, there's a short definition here, which shows metadata includes abstract, title, indexing terms. But there's also a learn more, which will take you to the data field section in our help files. And it gives a definition of each field, including um, the metadata as well. Wonderful. Um, and we're, we're at the top of the hour, we're actually one minute over, so we'll have one, time for one okay. more question. <laughs> and then, um, as I said, we'll try and follow up with people individually if we haven't gotten to your question, if possible. Um, the last question is regarding alerts and how many alerts can be created. Yeah, so uh, it depends um, on the type of alert you're setting up. There's unlimited for those journal table of content alerts, for example. But for saved search alerts, you have 15 saved search alerts that you can save. Um, I think it's 15 for the authors and citation alerts as well. Great. Excellent. Okay. That's All right, good. so let's um, go back to the PowerPoint real quick. Um, and I will uh, thank you all for your time today. Uh, just a reminder that if you do want a certificate to click the uh, yellow icon at the bottom of the screen to download the certificate. This is the only way to get a certificate is to access it through this platform. So please, if you email us, we're only going to be able to refer you to the platform again. And you can download a copy of the slides and the resources widget. But if you do, guys, if you do have any additional questions, please feel free to contact Craig and me and our team, the rest of our team at training at IEEE.org. Thanks, guys, and have a good rest of your day.